Hello everyone, uh, welcome. So we have this topic that is uh, the effects of IP address range blocking on contribution to the free knowledge. So uh, we are so excited that you are here. It will be a quick uh, presentation. I have some two other co-speakers joining online uh, who are Tochi and Bobby Shabangu from South Africa. Um, then after the pre presentation, we'll be having some open discussion with you all. And with us, there are other <laughs> stewards. We have some stewards, can you raise your hands? Yes, we have Johnny and Martin there. Then we have um, Niharika. Can you? All right, she's, doing, uh, she's working with the foundation on IP masking stuffs. So we are happy to have you here as well. All right, so um, IP address blocking have been an obstacle for most of the Wikimedia Foundation, um, Wikimedia movement contributors. And at some point, uh, some assumptions are there like, okay, is this a regional targeted thing? Are we really doing some mistakes to deserve this? And so on. So uh, I'll be welcoming Tochi to start um, telling us what is even IP blocking. Then I'll come later, then I'll, I'll welcome Bobby, then it will be an open discussion to all of you. So welcome, Tochi. Um, thank you, um, Anthony. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining our session. All right, um, so we all know that IP um, I issue is kind of a challenge to us. IP um, range block is a challenge to us. And a lot of us are familiar with it, either as an editor or maybe as an organizer, you must have experienced IP block somewhere or sometime at a point in, in uh, maybe in your editing process. In December 2022, um, user Rad, um, Radima WMF actually um, wrote a diff blog. He wrote three diff posts about um, IP address range blocking and he titled it um, What's happening with prox the title did what's happening with um, proxy blocks. So for the sake of this presentation, we are going to be focusing on global block and then um, the range block. The global block is the one that tells you you've been blocked from editing all wikis, which as an editor you must have experienced. And then the um, local block is the one that maybe as an organizer, one of your new participants is trying to sign up and then they tell them that um, they've been blocked. So those are the ones we're going to be um, focusing on. And when I talked about um, Ray's Diff um, article, he defined proxy and he, um, they said, I'm sorry, actually they, um, they said for the purpose of media blocks, a proxy is generally anything that allows a user to connect to Wikimedia projects through an IP address other than that assigned to them by their internet service provider. And then um, when you go on MediaWiki, you also see um, the definition of um, range blocks to be technical restrictions applied through um, a group of IP addresses that prevents them from editing, um, creating new accounts, sending emails through the wiki interface, et cetera. And this is also coined from um, MetaWiki. So um, we're trying to make you understand where we are coming from and what the focus is all about. And then there's a reason why these um, IPs are used. So the first one is to prevent cross-wiki vandalism, which is why um, you, you get the global block. And then it's also used to um, prevent cross-wiki spam. And also another reason for the um, IP address block is that it protects against um, sock puppetry. And um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, sock puppets are fake accounts that are created by some persons and they use it to do a whole lot of things. And then it's also used to prevent um, disruption on multiple um, Wikimedia projects. But then in as much as it has so many good parts to it, it also has some potential effects on contributions. And the potential effects of IP addresses can actually range from both positive and negative side, which we're also experiencing. So I'm going to be calling back Anthony for him to um, continue from there. Hi, Anthony. Okay, hi, Tochi, thank you so much. Uh, all right, so I'll be talking a little bit about positive effects uh, because 
some people they think IP blocking is only to like punish people, but they have their purpose. Some positive effects is that uh, it helps to avoid what is pre widespread cross-week vandalism. You know, some people, if uh, not everyone is having good intention into, towards contributing to the free knowledge through wiki platforms, so it helps to, to, uh, to prevent the widespread cross-week vandalism. Number two, it avoids cross-week spamming. As I said, I, we have some stewards here. We'll talk a little bit more about this on our interactive discussions. Number three, it, it prevents blatantly disruption on multiple projects. So, um, but also, IP blocking is having some negative effects. We have our colleague, Bobby Shabangu from South Africa. He's the witness and he is an event organizer. He experienced this while organizing some of the events. So I'll be welcoming him to talk a little bit more about the negative effects. Welcome, Bobby. Sure, thank you so much, Anthony. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be focusing on the negative effects of the IP blocking. And as, as my colleagues have already pointed out, that uh, as much as there are positive effects of IP blocking, but there are also negative effects of IP blocking, it seems, colleagues, that um, a lot of people do not really understand the positive effects of IP blocking, but they focus more on the um, negative effects of IP blocking. And um, one of the things that we've seen really over the years, you know, in my personal experience as a Wikimedian, and uh, also have seen other, uh, especially African Wikipedians, experience because of IP blocking has been discouragement. And people did not want to continue editing because you know, uh, it's, it's a lot of work to go through. Um, you find out that legitimate users of Wikipedia who have good intentions uh, wants to continue and edit Wikipedia, but because of the fact that um, there is, you know, they've been blocked uh, either temporarily or their accounts have been blocked like indefinitely. They don't want to really continue. And I need to say that when a person gets blocked, a reason is given, but because of the fact that now they are required to go to um, do the administration basically to read uh, the, the reasons, which are long, by the way, it then discourages, discourages them you know, from editing, and uh, it reduces the enthusiasm of new editors. New editors, for an example, they come on the wiki, they are happy, they want to just edit. They do not really, um, uh, you know, know about maybe five pillars of Wikipedia, or they don't know about, you know, some of the policies that are around different parts of the Wikimedia community or different language communities. Uh, so for them, they just come in, they edit, but they, you find out that there's not that uh, welcoming of new editors. Uh, when uh, the, 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 the new editor tries to edit, they are being blocked. And when they are trying to get the reason why exactly they are being they are being blocked, nothing is explained to them. Uh, instead, uh, the they are just being blocked, and they are, they are bombarded with information. So, <clears throat> the you find out that it discourages uh, new editors from be, being blocked for because of that that reason, and it, it just restricts access to editing. You know, for a lot of people. Uh, most of the reasons that I've seen, and it's something that I've already highlighted on actually, it's um, the administration that you have to go through in order for you to be unblocked. You know, you find out that you have to read through a lot of text. And I believe you, me, and I believe that in the room, everyone sitting, uh, sitting in the room uh, there uh, knows that you can actually find anything that you're looking for on Wikipedia, you know, but it's, it's, you have to go through a maze of information and uh, really you find out that um, people, you know, they, they just discourage. First, they have been blocked. Second, no proper explanation is given why you've been blocked. You're just given an information. Third, there seems to be not, you know, 
the caring of people seems to be, you know, lack of caring of people. Uh, looking into the history of the person, are they an, an experienced Wikipedia user, or they are a new new user? The, the, you know, there's there's not, you know, that that um, uh, taking care of people to look at their status and their experience. So yeah, you find out that uh, people, you know. Don't you know get you know uh, encouraged continuing uh, editing uh, on the side? Um, yeah. So uh, at this stage, I'm going to give back to Anthony to talk about how to solve the IP IP blocking issue. Thanks over to you. Thank you so much, Bobby, uh, for discussing with us the effects of the IP range blocking. So uh, there are some couple of ways you can go around with solving any problem that you face with around the IP blocks issues. So um, as I said, we have some stewards on the room. Uh, they tell us like there is a global IP block exemption. You can even act, you can actually ask from them. Uh, so you can create multiple accounts for your events. And number two, uh, there is a I think it's a, uh, a program called Wizard. They can tell us a little bit about, more, uh, about that. Then what, what Stewart can do, and it's one of the solution to help you. You can you reach out to them. They can help you. Then um, also we'll be happy to hear how can Stewards help on this, and who else could help. So this is now the open discussion uh, where we all, together with the uh, stewards, have to intermingle, like discuss about this. So maybe to kick off the discussion, who have ever experienced the IP blocking issues? Hands up. Oh, <laughs> I'm so happy that many hands are up. I'm not happy that it's a good thing, but I'm happy that uh, <laughs> it's something that exists that, and, and it needs discussion. Um, maybe now uh, I'll be welcoming some questions from participants or event organizers or participants who have ever experienced this. That question should be going to the stewards so they can help us. Why do that happen? Any question? You all said you experienced it. What was your case? Maybe you can ask, like, maybe I just saw my account was blocked. I didn't know. Oh, you have been, your IP is blocked. I didn't know why. This is the time we have to ask to, for the stewards to help us. Please, welcome. Oh, I need some mics. Uh, thank you, Sandra. And also, before you contribute, thank you all who are joining online. Please welcome. We are, you are free to ask anything, maybe on the chat, and our comms team will be happy to, to read for us. Welcome, please. OK, thank you. My name is Obi Ezilo. I'm from Nigeria. Um, my case is um, I was about organizing an event. I've already done the introduction, just like you did. And I did a little training with my students, and I asked them, I taught them how to create account. As I was about teaching them with my own uh, space, I got a notice, your account has been blocked. It was so embarrassing. I didn't know what to do. And um, what I did was to sit down and calm myself, not to be angry and not to show my embarrassment to my students. <laughs> and after some minutes, I logged out, I shut down the computer, and I tried to tell them everybody should hold on, that there's a problem, but they should keep calm, it will be solved. I tried calling some people that I know, but I noticed that after like three minutes, I on my laptop, when the person I was trying to reach uh, answered the call, and I logged in, I noticed I didn't see the sign, the pop-up again. So I was a kind of confused in the first place because I know I saw it and all of a sudden and I'm not seeing it again. So something must have happened. I don't know what happened. 
but I know I what happened. I, I I really can't explain what happened. And since that time, I've been very very careful. All right. So what could have been the problem? Okay. As the question. Thank you so much for that question. I see a hand from oh multiple of you. Maybe to Florence then. We take two questions, then I welcome the. It is just to a follow-up question yeah. for o yeah. a quick follow-up question for Obi. Can you say if the first attempt you did was on a computer using Wi-Fi in the room, and if the second attempt was on your cell phone using 3G or 4G? It was on the computer. I don't know how to use the mobile phone. I prefer my laptop, so it's Wi-Fi. Okay, thank you for the clarification. So I'll be welcoming the stewards. Anyone ready? Then I'll be coming back to you, uh, Felix and Dumisani. Um, hi, I'm Dodi from Malaysia User Group. Um, I've been doing uh, meetups in my country, around 30, 40 plus meetups. And then most of the time, most of our time were wasted because of the IP blocks. Uh, in the first two hours of the meetups, and we only have like one hour left uh, given for us, ranges from everything, you name it. Um, we use the, the school uh, IP address, it gets blocked, uh, not, not me, but especially the new students, they got, they got blocked, uh, they cannot create because the, the, the school IP address got blocked. I asked them to use their mobile phone, um, use their own 3G tethering, some my some works, but in some instant cases, even two or three cases, even that one got blocked as well. Um, so I really have no idea. I mean, how to how to do this uh, Wikimedia outreach uh, when when we 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 spend so much time preparing for this meetup, and then on the day itself, when teachers, students, everyone is here, then we cannot do anything. In which we don't even know where where's the. SOS button to ask for help with immediate answer right on the spot. And also last week in my apartment's Wi-Fi, I, I tried to log in. Uh, I log into my username, log in already. But then when I want to edit an account, um, an art article in English Wikipedia, I received this. This IP address has been blocked from editing Wikipedia because this the IP address that you are currently using has been blocked because it is believed to be used by peer-to-peer -peer proxy service. I tried to ask for uh, unblocking because there's a template below, but then even that one got rejected. So only after three, four days, then it, it was unblocked automatically, naturally, just like that, like that. So, I mean, where to ask for help for all of this thing? I mean, there are so many problems. All right, thank you. So now the mic will be going to the stewards to answer the three questions that have been asked, then we'll again come back. Welcome, Martin. Hello, Martin from Berlin, Germany, being a steward for 15 plus years. Um, and of course, know the situation. I have talked with a couple of users about this. And from the experience shared so far, um, I think we have to be more uh, clear what are the exact cases, who can help, and when it, that's the stewards. So um, I, I was hearing a um, couple of problems with creating accounts. This is throttled, limited by the MediaWiki software itself to six per IP address per day. This is not related to any kind of administrator or steward. That's a decision by MediaWiki developers whatsoever to limit the number of accounts created by an IP address for reasons of spamming, creating mass accounts, mass abuse, etc. And um, so there's a good reason to have that, and I'm pretty sure that this will not be changed easily. So what to do about that? Of course, a foundation is aware of events where accounts need to be created. And for that reason, event organizers are asked to have the accounts created by the pupils beforehand, before they come to the place, because just as Anthony was asking, if you do this in a different mobile net or a different Wi-Fi, 
with a different IP address, you can create your own account, but not for the other ones. One solution. Other solution, um, uh, not the easiest one, is uh, asking before that event to um, get the IP address of the venue where you do this whitelisted for a specific time. You have to submit a fabricator ticket at least two weeks in advance and those who are already out of that <laughs> say, I won't do that myself either. So I don't consider this to be a solution. But it's, yeah, yeah. I, just, I just say what solutions are offered, not if they're good ones. <laughs> <laughs> and third one is um, administrators and everyone who needs um, uh, to be lifted from such limitations have, and there's a no rate limit user right, which uh, prevents or re re removes the six per day limit. Uh, every administrator on any Wikimedia project has that right automatically. So if you're an administrator on your local lang language Wikipedia, you can create accounts for all your um, all your pupils or all the uh, uh, trainees in uh, at the event. Of course, that's still not so nice. The experience would be better if the people would create the accounts themselves, which is why I re would recommend the first way to ask them to create the, these before the event, which requires additional communications. How to do that? I'm, I know. But yeah, well, that's a ad hoc uh, solution for the problems there. So if you have administrator rights somewhere, do that. Hint, admin rights on test wiki, for example, is pretty easily um, given out, or test to wiki or whatsoever. So uh, prepare yourself if you're a trainer. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> We're Thank you, still Martin. At, we're still at the first of the three problems. That yes, are yes, here. yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, so, and yes, that's the, the one I wanted to say that um, accounts can be, we have global accounts, yes, thanks to 2008 and 2015 when we had the single user log in finalization. Um, so that if you create an account on a local wiki, or a lo local language wiki, it can also be used on Commons, on, on English Wikipedia, etc. So even if you're just an administrator on a smaller project, the accounts that you create will be available on all the wikis. So that's the part of uh, limitations on uh, account creation, which has nothing to do with stewards. So if you experience a blog that you were um, talking about, this seems to be a local block on English Wikipedia. It's provided with the local um, uh, message on your to user talk page and the procedures how to do that. If the procedures are good or not on English Wikipedia, that's not on Stuart's duty. Um, and there are reasons why peer-to-peer -peer -peer proxy, uh, proxies are blocked. Uh, they were mentioned in this talk, so it's Okay, it's, there is the policy that says it's not good to have that because of possible abuse. And this is handled differently on local Wikimedia projects as well as stewards. Stewards also block IP addresses on a global level. Um, and in our <laughs> block message, messages, there is a contact form, how to reach out to us. And as mentioned, we are working on a wizard, which hopefully also easifies complaints about global blocks. So we are aware of the situation. Uh, we try to do that, to improve that, including the, the uh, complaint, uh, complaint process. But sadly, obviously, most of the problems arise from the limi limitations of registrations and local blocks. And stewards only have a say in global blocks. 
Okay. Thank you, Martin. Uh, all right. Uh, I know. One, one little addition from colleague. Oh, welcome, Johnny. Hello, my name is John. I'm also a steward. And I just wanted to add a little bit to that as well for methods to perhaps uh, avoid. Um, you know, you have your event and, you know, some people can't create accounts, right? Because either you reached a limit or there's a block, whatever it may be, right? Um, so what you can do perhaps is, again, like as beforehand, you can have the administrators and they can um, create the accounts ahead of time, you know, like whether you have like a form or a sign up sheet where you can get, you collect the emails and then when you create the account, it's actually an interface um, called special create account. And um, so I can create an account for a new user and then it sends them the password by email kind of thing. Um, so if you hit that six rate limit um, on the English Wikipedia, for example, there's a rate called account creator. Uh, where you can bypass that rate limit of, of six per 24 hours, as well as any administrator on any project can do that as well. Um, so my advice would be to try to do as many as you can before. And if people run into issues where they have a blocked IP at, at home for some reason, then you can perhaps on the event day, um, you know, address or create with a different IP, you know, at the actual event rather than the home. Um, I don't think anything else. I remember, um, I think a colleague mentioned that you did an event, was it at a school and there was a block? So with schools, right, like even when I was in, in high school, it, all it takes is one person to go and write something silly and then they're going to block, right, uh, the entire school, right? And generally this happens at the local level, you know, English Wikipedia, and it's pretty standard. But um, as a part of that, usually they, they can tell it's a, a school that has the IP, and they do what's called uh, an anonymous only block. So what that means is that only people that are not logged in cannot edit. If you have an account and you are logged in, you should not be impacted by that block. So generally best practices is when it's like kind of a shared IP, whether it's like university or um, you know, other educational institution, it is an anonymous only block. So if you have an account beforehand um, or created elsewhere, like on at, at a home Wi-Fi or something like that, or even like cellular Wi-Fi uh, or internet, um, then you can avoid that. So it's one of those messages that tells you the conditions of the block. Um, whether it's anonymous only or not. And that applies to both local and global blocks. Um, so, you know, if let's say, for example, us as stewards, we see a, like a range block, we have to do a range block where there's a lot of abuse or something like that. But there are legitimate editors uh, on that range. What we would do in that instance is we do it anonymous only, right? So that the people that are already editing on, on that range can continue editing. But then the problem is, is that the, it's the balance because the abuse is so bad we have to put a block in, but then we can't have new accounts made. They have to request it, you know, kind of whether it's through an admin or another trusted user on the project or, you know, reach out to Stuart so we can, you know, help them have an account and not edit. Because of or, limitations of the software. Correct. So we have asked for there are some limitations in the, in the MediaWiki software currently. We have some tickets of, uh, that we have requested since, I mean, 2015, 2010, probably 2008, um, for improvements so that we can kind of whitelist. So like, let's say we brought a huge range, right? And there's this portion of, of IPs that should not be blocked. We can't choose to exempt this, this portion. It has to be the whole thing. It's, so it's all or nothing in some instances, which causes us problems because sometimes we can identify like, oh, this particular uh, sub-range isn't an issue. So there are limitations in the software that do impact our ability to have this um, be optimal. And we are working with those limitations so that we can kind of have everything in balance and in check. But obviously, um, no block will be perfect because everybody can be impacted, you know, when because there are legitimate users that try to edit every day, right, and they get caught because of um, preventative blocks put in place to prevent abuse that has been occurring on um, these IP addresses or ranges. 
And I, I'm happy to answer any further questions, just kind of explain or clarify any details as well, because it is, it is a complex topic. There's local, global, and then there's limitations of the software as well. Um, and we all have to you know, work together to make sure that we can um, optimize that participation, because we want people to edit. We really, like, that's what we're all here for, right? We don't want anybody to be caught in, in a block. But at the same time, um, the processes can be improved, and we are working to improve them with the wizard to help you identify you know, what the reason is behind the block. Yeah, and we are also working with the foundation as well to um, make sure that the tools are in place so that this is, is better addressed moving forward, and this is a continuing dialogue that we have. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. All right, so here is what is follows. Uh, we have some online people, I hope. Uh, Winnie, do we have any comment from online participants before I... Okay, so, um, no, all right, thank you. So I'll be welcoming you more questions. I, I saw a hand from Felix Dumisan, then there, we'll come there. So now the time is almost coming to an end, so I'll collect all the questions. Then maybe stewards will help to answer some of them. I know this could have been like three hour discussion or two hours, we could be better, but, but we have just 30 minutes and now 12 minutes are remaining. So welcome Felix, then Dumisan, then my brother there, then. We'll come here. Welcome. I think he answered my question. My question was going to be on the range. Why they block every um, IP in the range, even when they know setting IPs are good enough to be like retained. And he did mention there's a limitation in the software, so I think he, he pretty much answered that. But um, I think the question, the next question I have is for the whole room. And I think we've been complaining about this, speaking about this a lot, but. Uh, I don't think enough has been done about it. So the question for me is, what do we do as a collective about this problem? Because like, it's hurting what we do as Wikimedians. Thank you. Question number one, what do we do from Felix? Then next, Dumisani, what do you say? I just want to comment, so you just can go per question. Yeah, I can comment later. I have some advice for think so, yeah. You can do first. <laughs> yeah, I think Felix, the he didn't say that um, they've solved the thing. He said that the, 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 there's a limit. He didn't say there's a limitation on the on the software. He said that they they've asked for a tool in 2008. You said for uh, b being able to to work on a sub range. Yeah. So us as stewards, we have requested in, um, so there's a system like Fabricator where you can request software improvements or report uh, bugs with the MediaWiki software. And we have requested some improvements to make us handling, um, but us like to the global blocking tools, for example, right? So let's say there's an abuse on a large range, right? For example, and we want to exempt, let's say either one IP or a range of IPs within that larger range. Currently, that's technically impossible with the MediaWiki software. They have not made the changes to allow us to do that. So what we're faced with is we have to, in a global block situation, if, if it's a hard block, is what we call it, when you anybody can't edit, um, so it's not just logged out users, um, we have to add, let's say, global IP block exemption, right? So there is a request page on Meta, um, MetaWiki, but um, this is where you can request that, right? But that also depends on if the IP is unblocked on Meta or not, because it could was very well also be blocked on Meta. Um, if an IP is, a, is blocked on Meta, it's generally for a good reason. We generally try not to block both globally and on meta, unless there is persistent abuse that um, justifies a meta block. Um, but yes, I, to clarify, there, where was a request made, or have, have been requests made over the course of, you know, over 
eight years that we've requested to you know improve some software, right? Um, so that we could. Yeah, and that's what that's where I was coming in. Um, this this is really an issue for us, especially in in Africa, because unfortunately, when these IP um, were being assigned, as you know, we were the last to be assigned the IP addresses, and we were got we got assigned a very specific small portion of the, those IP addresses. So the, I, the, the, the service providers have to hop us onto different IP addresses, not because we we chose that. And we know the world is not going to move on to IP6 anytime soon. So we are left with this situation, which we didn't create, which is making our editing lives a horrible thing. So what can we do to help you uh, get the tools that you need? to do to 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 get that because i think it would really solve something if it does make sense to block the whole range when you can actually select a specific range well that's the general problem of popularity votes like community wish lists <laughs> it, it's it's like of course as i said i'm doing this for a couple of years and i tried various ways to get tools um prioritization with foundation a couple of times um, in various documents and at various places etc etc it's really like there even have been tools uh, or teams like admin tools development and, and such but places like community wish list where the 35 stewards that are out there <laughs> are the community who can uh, evaluate if, if that's a good thing for us or not and no one else understands the impact more or less it's really a problem so it's yeah you were i i, I co-created the uh, wikimedia studios user group so that we can more easily get grants to 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 do to hire our own developers but as you can imagine it's not so easy to manage um uh, getting people on board, etc., uh, especially with a small user group. We are only a small user group as well. So it's like, um, personally, I don't think that community wish list is the right place for that. Uh, per I personally th uh, don't think that hiring our own developers really makes sense. It is foundation task to provide a useful software uh, foundation for for anyone to add it and yeah and with the recent annual plan moderator tools etc um there are some steps in that direction to also work on technical improvements that at first uh, look seem to only affect a couple of users us but um the the uh, impact our work has especially in blogs or administrators in general uh, have um, has to be evaluated at, at, at a different place and I'm still here thank you I, thank I'm not yet gone as a steward because I really dislike uh, the, the situation we are in uh, that we don't have the tools we need and um, I have a little hope now with the snaps we have right now and the conversations with the foundation um, that some development will happen but yeah so it's we are talking to foundation and i think we're the only ones who actually can because we know the technology behind that and i don't know well, Thank what you. would you say? Should should we ask for support, endorsements at some point for some stuff? Maybe that would help. We'll definitely take that back to our group and um, integrate that into our conversations. But I have the feeling right now, Foundation uh, understands that there is a problem and that they should listen to stewards uh, what they need to limit to reduce the problems and i know some people want to talk about that as well <laughs> thank you so much okay. uh, martin so what i'm going to do is that i saw some hands i need uh, I, I gotta go next hand yeah okay 
So it's gonna be steward round table eventually. Yep. Sure. So I just want to before I'm not asking question, but like it might be useful to share as a local administrator level. I'm Youngjin, as you know, and I'm administrator and oversight in Korean Wikipedia. So what's problem with the IP? I'm just gonna share what's problem with the IP address range blocking. Because like in South Korea, there is specific vandalism IPs. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but like they are like they're doing it in like IPv6, and they're, they're, there's IPv6 like 2001, 2D8, and there's lots of variety. So like the, if we block the range, if I, it is not possible to block the range, and they, it is the, it is possible to they evade themselves by like disconnecting and connecting the cellular data. So the it has like the other side effect. If you not block, it, it is, has like the preventive vandalism, but like the other administrators are aware that if you are blocking the like the wide range, it's gonna be having false positives a lot. Like my examples of the 2001, 2D8, blah, blah, blah. That's like kind of the, I don't thinking that's like gonna be effective to like the blocking by that. But I just like to making locks to block like specific IPs. I, even I know they're evading. That's my 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 wiki situation, but like that's I think good to note before that. And I just like to hear observe like about the meeting. Thirty seconds, sorry. Yeah, meetings and like the, I I can give you advice. It's like the coordinate to whatever community or the administrators if you have any connections to it. It is more may easier to get like in the small wikis because I think in English Wikipedia has large and large process, but like the even going smaller wikis, it might be being easier as long as the administrators are active. It is easier to cooperate. Yeah, that's what I was feeling when I was doing. Yeah, thank I, you. I think the mic should go here. Then we have like less than uh, three minutes, so okay. yeah. Well, I'll try to make my remarks short, um, and I want to face the room when I talk. Um, because I've been in this on the other side, perhaps even more closely than Martin and John have. I'm Daniel Case. I'm an administrator of the English Wikipedia, and I'm looking at faces that are probably behind quite a few unblocked, that may be behind a few unblocked declines, where I've just basically had to say a procedural decline. You're not directly blocked. You may not be responsible for this, but we, you know, but uh, it's probably hard. It's in, you know, it's hard enough to lift those open proxy blocks. You know the you know, you have to really know your tech and network stuff. So I often refer people to the IPEC proxy page where they, you can request, you can, you can submit a request through email to have, you know, you know, to, to get IP block exemption on the English Wikipedia. We used to, administrators used to be able to give it out, but someone gave it out once like too many party favors and well, we can't have nice things anymore. Yes, all of us administrators do have the right to, you know, to give out IP block exemption, but I've only given it out to people who've had it before, you know, prove that they're there, that they're here for good reasons. And, uh, you know, and I feel I can say it was a good call on my port or people I know who've edited for years that I can trust. And yeah, that's, I, I don't know, there have been people complaining about how much time that list it, it takes to answer. The other suggestions I have is sometimes if you're on a VPN, which I know some people may need to be on to, you know, to, to edit from where they are, you know, turn the VPN off. That sometimes solves the problem, but you have to wait a day or two for the DNSs to update. Um, other things too, we have discussed on community wish lists the idea of uh, putting in, you know, you know, instead of blocks being all soft or all hard, we could, you know, as people have asked, what if we only had them apply to everybody who's not an extended confirmed user or, or apply only to auto or apply to non-auto confirmed accounts? That would have less effect, that would have less of this problem. I'm also, it, this is grim confirmation of what I've thought, you know, yes, these disproportionately affect Africa and I'm thinking of Heather Ford's presentation, saw a lot of the same faces there. And well, we were talking there about the causes of these gaps here we have one, and uh, you know, believe me, this doesn't. This is, you know, this causes a lot of. This causes me some pain on my end too that I can't do more, but I can just suggest, uh, you know, supporting the, the next community wish list request for this kind of spectrum of uh, block hardness, and uh, you and making use of the uh, check users mailing list. It is available if I am the one declining your unblock request when your registered account is behind a proxy. 
uh, that's been blocked, I will, I, I will give you the link and I will tell you it's not your fault, but that's all I can do. Anybody? So maybe Hi. 10 seconds or something? The time was wrong. Um, so yes, welcome. Not sure, but I think it's kind of important. Hi, I'm Gergo. I'm a MediaWiki developer. Uh, I, I think there is a mindset problem here. So in, in the end, IP blocking is a way to prevent people from doing lots of contributions. There are other ways of preventing bad people from doing lots of contributions. Those are more experimental. Uh, the people who are involved in blocking have been very averse to experimentation. So I think part, part of why we, we don't have better methods is the foundation hasn't been very interested in, in uh, supporting development efforts. That's hopefully changing these days. But the other part is that, that people doing the blocking have been very risk averse, and that has to change. That, that really has to change because the browser Chrome is, is working on a feature called uh, privacy sandbox. It's not very widely known, but uh, Stuart's probably heard about this because uh, currently, uh, currently one effect of that is that, that uh, user agents are harder to access, but an even lesser known feature is that they want to hide IP addresses completely in something like a year. So English, English Wikipedia has taken a not our problem stance to to IP blocks, but it's 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 becoming their problem soon. So if, if you are involved in blocking, then please get your communities involved in discussion and in what features can be found to replace IP blocks because we don't have a very long time to figure out something else that works. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, I really wanted this discussion to continue, but the time is over. Uh, I'd like to use this chance maybe to welcome Bobby. Are you still online to say something and Toshi to say bye? Welcome. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, colleagues, for this discussion. As um, Anthony has said, there's a lot to be said here. It's just limited time. Uh, please let's you know continue with these uh, conversations. The people that are administrators there, please uh, don't uh, run away from us. We want to take to have these conversations more to you, Toshi. Um, thank you, Bobby. Thank you, everyone, for joining this session. We actually do wish that we had so much time because it's really a pressing topic. Indeed. So, um, dear stewards, everyone involved, please, if we call on to you, kindly come to our aid and let's work together in any way possible. Wherever we can assist as a community, we are happy to help. Please do reach out to us as well because we're all in this together. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you much. Thank you so much, Bobby and Tochi. Uh, yes, so we still have some time. Wikimani is ending in 20th. So maybe when we bump on the corridors, we can continue talking. So for this, uh, I'd like to thank much all of you who are here and the stewards for joining us and for clarifying some of the questions. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thank you and see you around. <laughs>